So today, what I want to do was bring on my man, Stash, to talk about the different things that are going on in crypto gaming, because I believe we've got quite a ways to go. Stash, welcome to the show yet again. Rob, yes. Thank you, sir. It has been a little while, man, you know, uh, but I like to think that we're, we're like best friends that like just are so busy that don't see each other very often, but still every time we come back together, it is complete magic and fire. And that's what we're bringing to you guys today. So we're going to talk all about Web3 gaming, all the questions answered, whatever you want to know, whatever you're curious about. You Maybe you're hearing some things. I got the answers. That's what we do here at the GIA here. Uh, and, uh, you know, Secret Agent Sash is going to bring it all to you. If anybody's wondering, this is exactly how Stash is 24-7. Always like this, always on fire. So let's just do a little, a little quick intro and just talk about, of course, if you don't know who Stash is, uh, here's his website or here's his uh, YouTube channel. It's great. He's bordering, hovering at 92K, almost at that 100K beautiful level, which he should have already had, let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> yeah, especially it's close, with going. I don't know. YouTube don't like me. YouTube doesn't. YouTube likes you just fine. And look at this. This is us just about a year and a half ago. Look at those two kids. Look at that. Look at this is what a uh, a bear market will do to you. And this one, <laughs> this was this was November 14, 21. See, it's, it's, it's a pretty big difference from now. Both of you, you look both of us now versus then. <laughs> pretty big difference, man. Uh, you know, that's me in my in my uh, uh, you know Uber Chad disguise uh, <laughs> crypto stash. You know, so that's one of my my good disguises. That's right. Excellent. You know, we had almost 120,000 views in that one, 119,000 views. Jeez Louise. And then uh, that video I actually oh, put into, into the, the website, Dan Teaches Crypto 100% Free. You were the first video on Module 6 in the metaverse. So Stash, I want to say thanks again for coming on. No problem. Uh, you know, I, I've been waiting for the, um, the check for the residuals for that then in the mails i if i not <laughs> do you do you take any kind of crypto i can send it over no big deal See, uh, yeah i i only take dogecoin though sir doge only ah oh, i should have sent it to you about two weeks ago you've been rich already yeah i should have sent it to you elon says it's the best sir sir elon elon the doge i wish elon would talk about bitcoin a little bit more but the hey what are you gonna coin. do it's the so, or the doggy coin as, as my as my uh my parents call it <laughs> my dad my said dad's like he's like did you know about the doggy coin and i, I said what and i'm like oh it's doge the do doge coin oh yeah the doggy coin yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's like, he was like he was like oh i thought it was doggy I, I you know it makes sense doggy doggy coin tell me you're not into crypto 100 percent of the time without telling me you're not in crypto 100 percent of the time <laughs> doggy coin exactly <laughs> funny so, enough not the first time i've kind of heard some stuff like that for people who have been in crypto for a while yeah there, there's a, there's a lot of history in crypto you know we, we for us ogs have been around for a long time i've seen mm -hmm. a lot of trends and things and funny little weird stuffs and you know, i've been around when a lot of these things were created and uh then maybe now fallen by the wayside even <laughs> things move fast in crypto hey man i i will tell you one thing before we move on is that i always thought that dogecoin would just be a meme coin it wouldn't really get anywhere but it's been around forever and i think it's still in the top 10 so King anybody memes. yeah memes memes baby Seeing so the, the meme coins are not my my specialty. Maybe not yours. Your specialty stash is, of course, the gaming. So I got a couple of questions for you. First of all, why is crypto gaming the future? And then we're going to talk about why. what's the barrier to adoption? What's going on? Why haven't we seen more adoption? Is it poor games? Is it lack of understanding? Is it education? And then we'll get into the last one is for the non-gamer, what do you want to look at? So for the, for the very first one, why is crypto gaming the future? And also to everybody who has uh, signed up for Dan Teaches Crypto, that 100% free website, check your email inbox today. A little special offer for you. So the future. And we covered this, uh, not extensively, but a pretty good amount. There was a, a really, right, right. one of the most bullish reviews that I had uh, taken a look at. And it was from Citibank. And Citi is the, uh, the third largest bank in the United States. I think it's the uh, 11th largest Ooh. bank in the United States. Maybe boo, but they are all about digital assets, crypto. And one of the big things they talked about in this report, well, first of all, CBDCs. But the second thing. Also boo. Also big boo. Three billion gamers currently. We expect 50 to 100 million could be Web3 users by 2025. With estimates rising as Web2 hits include tokens. And they actually uh, interviewed Ryan Wyatt 
from Polygon Studios. And then we had a report, Saudi Arabia, 620 billion wealth fund finding its way into crypto. On top of that, they just pumped 38 billion into video games. So Stash, the question I have then, this is what I see, but I'm not in the thick of it like you. Why is crypto gaming the future? Well, <clears throat> two things. Okay, so right, some of the things you just showed us right now mm -hmm. really points to the fact that gaming is going to be a huge part of, of the future, right? So, so a crypto gaming or Web3 gaming aside, just gaming in general is growing at a very large rate, right? Year over year, there are more people gaming across more different platforms and different styles. You know, mobile gaming has really broken things out. So, you know, we're adding billions of gamers here over the course of, of just a couple of decades, right? You know, you look at really when gaming got started to where we're at now, it's only it's been a very short amount of time. Right. Um, so we're, we're adding these people at, at, at exponentially race uh, you know, exponential pace here. And the money that is flowing into gaming is also really a, a large amount, too. So you talk about all these gamers. Well, how much money does that equate to? It's a lot. It's mm -hmm. a lot. It's a it's a multi trillion dollar industry in, in total, right? <sighs> so you look at like why crypto gaming or why NFT gaming? Well, just that that one fact alone is, is one of the biggest things. But when it comes to NFT games, well, there it, you, now you're weaving in a little bit of a, a financial element to these things that can be commoditized, right? That you can use the, the, in a way that makes it more like a tradable commodity um outside of the games themselves and that's kind of what i think you know nfts and crypto can help do uh and when you look at the financial element of that it, it's great but there's tons of great benefits for gamers right. right so we talk about this technology being used in the games themselves well, why why do gamers want it it's just like uh, just another thing damn it stash another thing no <laughs> it's not just another thing i mean it can actually be something that is going to increase the uh you know ease of use right improve the experience that's what gamers want they just want a better experience you know they just want a great experience overall that's what everybody wants right we just want something that's going to improve the experience and i think nfts or will do that for games in a number of ways um a being able to own your assets outside of the game itself right uh that helps with things like you know oh ah, my, my account got banned or, 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 or hacked or something like, you know, now all my stuff, well, hey, you know what? Sorry, we can't do anything about it. You know, we're, we're you know, this it's right here just on this centralized server. Uh, we don't have any kind of control over that. But if you have those assets in your own wallet, you have them there safe and uh, you, you then are in control of those assets, right? That could be a good or bad thing. But being able to trade those assets outside of the game is a really big boon, right? Uh, having, no, knowing that an asset has value in the game and people desire it, being able to then trade that asset to somebody else uh, unlocks a lot of potential liquidity in a game as well. So you think about how much money in assets hmm. a game ha like Fortnite has locked up, right? How many millions of dollars they've sold in skins. And all these assets are locked up in their, in their ecosystem. Now, they got the original sale. They got the original sale. Great. They made a bunch of money. They've made tons of money off selling skins. That's how they make their money. Right. Millions and millions of dollars, even with the Apple massive 30 percent cut. Right. But they, uh, you know, they, it stops there. Now, if these skins were NFTs, <laughs> they could be traded in marketplaces in or outside of the game easily. Right. In people's wallets. And then they and then Fortnite could be taking a cut of that uh, residuals. So they're making even more off every asset. I mean, it is a it, it is a no brainer play for a lot of games. Not every game, definitely not every game, but a lot of games can benefit from from blockchain technology in a number of different ways. NFTs and you know even tokens can be incorporated successfully if done in the right type of way. Now that's hard to do. We've seen incorporating a token is incredibly hard to do. You know, doing NFTs is much easier and and makes sense already to gamers. Right. So here, th that's the connection. Right. As you talk about well, where's the connection here, Stash, you have all these billions of gamers, right? Billions of gamers. And it just and, and as we saw from the data, that's just going to continue to climb and grow every year as it's been doing more and more people gaming. Right. Right. Then you have, yeah, right. Th then you talk about, well, if, if you can buy and sell and trade assets like this and that's an incentive for developers to include it into into their games. 
right? Well, now you have people being able to unlock that, that those amount of dollars, that liquidity there for doing other things and, and doing crossover things as well. With, there's, there's a lot you can do, you know, with these NFTs, but you talk about, well, well why would why would these regular gamers who are, who are growing at a, a crazy rate, why would they be interested in Web3? Well, it comes down to the fact that gamers in general are already very comfortable with digital assets. Hmm something they already do anyways so you know the, it, whether you're playing a web 3 game or web 2 game in, in the very near future you're not gonna be able to tell you're, you're just gonna be doing something and you're gonna get gems <laughs> or game or whatever you're doing while you're we're sitting on the on the toilet taking a crap in the morning you're like all right here's i'm doing my farm bill, you know? and, and, and you're gonna earn gems and, and those will event there'll be a a process to be able to like tr you know trade those into crypto assets and then get something like an nft or cash it out possibly to like a usd uh, or T or USC or something like that, right? So that that's the connection there, right? So these gamers are already familiar with gaming assets, the existing ones, and new ones coming on board. It, you know, this is something you already see in gaming. It just it's like, well, what's running it in the back end? Well, it could be NFT technology, which ju is just a better way to track things and an easier way to make things tradable outside of a game and increase liquidity for a game in general and and possible profits for developers, and then also you know being able to uh, for, for as a gamer being able to sell your assets like hey i played this game for a year and a half and i loved it and i you know spent you know a thousand dollars on assets now i'm leaving i'm going to this other game oh i spent way more than that this is this is just you know I, spent, oh, I, spent, I, I don't want to tell you how much i spent in some games it's, it's kind of it's, rob it's a little bit maybe embarrassing we'll say but as an adult spending thousands of dollars in a video game yes uh, it happens a lot people don't realize how, how like i said it's a huge industry there's a lot of money being spent on on in-game assets uh so having those that are tradable and i could sell them to somebody else they can have use of them uh it is great for a game right for the longevity of it for like i said for those royalties and then also for the gamer being able to unlock some some you know potential revenue back maybe you, you pay 50 bucks for it and then now you can sell it back in the market for five you know it just brings back that kind of old school feeling of going to gamestop and having oh, that yeah. game you know, you know, bringing back your cartridges, blowing them, like, make sure they're all clean, you know, get them in the package, bring them back in, and you're like, you're like yeah, I, I got this game, uh, you know, four months ago, I beat it, everything, I, can, I want to trade it in, how much are you going to give me? And they're like, they're looking at it, they're like, yeah, okay, retail was, what's, uh, $59.99, uh, yeah, it's been four months, uh, so I, we'll give you five bucks. Yeah. You know, and you're like, what? <laughs> and then they go and sell it, and then now they're selling it for 35 and you're like, son of a bitch, you know? But that's kind of how it goes. But at least you got something, right? You know, at least you got yeah. something if someone's willing to pay something for because there's a de desire for it in the game. So I think that because of those reasons, really, you know, that the two connections right there, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a kind of that three part gaming growing massively quick. Gamers are comfortable with digital assets already. And then, you know, the jump to Web3 is a lot shorter for these people, especially with the better onboarding that we're seeing here with Web3 games, which is really important for the future of Web3 gaming, right? For crypto games. So I, I think that that, that really, that, that, you know, with that hop there, that's why. So then, you, and then, then why is that important for financial wise? Because that means lots of money coming into these ecosystems, right? So when you talk about, well, what coins, what things you want to look at, what do you want to bet on? Gaming is going to be a surefire bet in the bull run coming here. Surefire. I got to tell you, that is, uh, that is the best answer I've heard from anybody. And I've talked to uh, quite a few people. Stash, fantastic. I bring the fire. I bring the fire. So myself and the GIA, the Gaming Intelligence Agency. That's you know, that's the agency we got going on here. That we work for Secret Agent Stash. Always brings the heat. Exactly. So I got to tell you. So the things you just you just mentioned, you talk about the things that are going to happen, how it can kind of roll out. But there was a question then: is what are the gamers missing? And and be, actually, before I, I go on to that, just to add on mm -hmm. on your point, this was the interview with the, with uh, Ryan Wyatt from Polygon, where he talked about how you know like like gamers just you know they. They, they have this one aspect, but they don't really, you know, get the next part. And he talks about consumers did not ask developers for cloud gaming back in the day. Multiplayer games, mobile games, or play-to-earn games. And they certainly aren't going to ask for blockchain games. And then, and then to add to your point about the revenue to, for generation for developers, this was interesting. He said developers can also enforce creator royalties, allowing the content creator to receive royalties every time the digital item is resold. So I think yeah, just to just, talk, yeah, That's what yeah, I was just, just talking about. Just to, just exactly. to build on that, I mean, that's, what's, that's where things, I think, are going. So th then the question is, what's the hiccup? What's the problem? What's the barrier to adoption? And here was one of them. Not a, not a, a barrier. This is what I had heard, and we had mm -hmm. talked about it, wasn't it? This is Dr. Disrespect's game. 
Uh, yeah, Dead, Dead Drop. Drop. Great game. Really, Looks pretty really, good. Really Dr. Disrespect, up. if you don't know, 4.32 million subscribers. Pretty huge in the gaming sector. And uh, this is you and Dr. Dis First of all, are you just really short or is Dr. Disrespect just really tall? Dude, the dude is a beast. He is, he is like six foot eight. Jeez Louise. He's, he's really tall. So yeah, he makes me look like a freaking midget almost, right? <laughs> I stand next to this guy and, and he's towering over me. Uh, but he's a cool, he's, he's, he's a cool guy. He's, he's a good guy. We, you know, we had, we had some decent little chats, you know? Yeah, very nice. And then this is you playing, playing the game itself. But, but the question I have is like when, when, this, when this game Dead Drop came out, this is what I had read in articles, mm. which was because he gave away NFTs for founders built on Polygon. Mm -hmm. He gave these away or bought or, or however it, it was done for, for founders to get in for early access. Yep. And then some of, the, some of the other gamers, was what I had understood, was, were furious that they had done NFTs. And I keep hearing this about how gamers hate NFTs. They yep. don't get it. They're very angry. So on this game, was that the truth? Or, and also, to, to, to talk about it, NFTs and gamers, are they angry at this? And is that one of the barriers to adoption? Gamers. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a great first, uh, you know, uh, way to kick things off. You know, gamers are they're They're just very much against NFTs. And, you know, there's a couple of different reasons out there. We see people talk about it. Right. But these gamers in general, like like the mainstream narrative has become NFTs bad. NFTs bad, sir. <laughs> and, the, the, and the reason why is, oh, well, it's just it's a cash grab. They're just trying to get more money out of us. They just, they're just, they're just going to try and get more money. That's what it is. And they're, they're going to take advantage of us or, or uh, the environment, sir, the, but the environment, you know, like, and so, so it, there's been a couple of narratives of like, why are they bad? Well, because they why do, they and it's, you know, it's a lot of it comes down to money. Right. So I think, I think a lot of the narrative you know, became uh, uh, created early on because in the beginning of web three games, getting started here, NFT crypto games, you know, there have been quite a few scams and people who made games that like scam people away. So they just equate like, oh, they, you know, these things happened early on. And that means all games, they have NFTs or scams. It's just how they are. That's what NFTs are. They're scams. And so that becomes a narrative within the mainstream gaming community. And so then anything that comes up that has NFTs, it just becomes toxic because everyone you know, is just kind of following this mainstream narrative. And then Dr. Disrespect actually called people out on this mm -hmm. when they gave him crap about, uh, you know, talking about NFTs for this latest release. And 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 basically was like, no, you know, you're just you, you you guys are just morons following the mainstream narrative. You're not thinking for yourself and seeing the future here. And that's exactly what's happening in a lot of the cases, right? But the, you know, a lot of the gamers I talk to, you know, they, they're open to it. They just don't really know anything about it. When like asked directly, you know, they don't. They just want to know more. They just don't have the information they need. And that's what I do on my channel is really talk about you know, how beginners can get involved with gaming and NFTs and why it's important. And we go all the way into the in-depth stuff too, you know, and obviously playing the games, a focus on playing the games, having fun mostly, but <laughs> doing that with a community, right? And talking about all these elements at the same time. So yeah, it, it, it can be yeah. it can be a huge barrier to entry, I think, you know, is, is that first barrier is, is perception. Right now, the perception is NFTs bad in games, bad. But that is changing, and I think we're seeing it slowly change. And I think that Doctor Disrespect's game Dead Drop, I think, actually is helping to change that. Because yeah, I mean, they, they you know, they did NFTs. They, uh, you know, it, it wasn't like a big cash grab. It's basically just an early access pass. But it also gives you additional benefits in the game, like having a cool skin, a custom skin, at yeah. that, uh, which is really cool. But then getting other other skins and other benefits as a founder, like. At early access to their events, which they just had a big event in Texas, which I was at, which is where I met, you know, Doc and and the crew. Um, we, we, you know, founders who had an NFT got access to that event for free first before the general public, right? So having utility for your NFT beyond just like, oh, it's an access to the game, right? It's like an access code for Steam, right? You, you know, I'm sure a lot of people, if you know or play games on Steam, you get a free one, you get an access code, you just pop it into Steam, and boom, now the game is in your library and you can install it. Well, that's basically what this NFT is, but just done in a, in a way that, it, you know, makes it reusable uh, and tradable. And, and that is, a, I think, is a big thing, right? So you're trading this value, this utility within the game that actually people are desiring. The price has gone up significantly, actually, since this latest release, this latest snapshot. And they're, they're still in an alpha stage. They're in closed alpha right now. I mean, and it's I mean, like how much they've done, you know, so, yeah. So when you talk about barrier to, uh, to adoption, the, the perception is the first barrier. 
That, that is the first barrier. The second one is going to be like the UI and, and, the, and, and, and the actual you know, onboarding of somebody into a Web3 ecosystem in some sort of way. So that's, that's the second biggest one, I think, that we have to really overcome. Perception. Excellent. You know, and it, it's, I mean, we're, it's first. It's, first. Yeah. it's number one right now. Yeah. Number one, we're fighting the same battle with um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything down the line with, with the general public, because there's been so indoctrinated for what the information that they actually put out. And I got to tell you, like, I take a look at this and I'm, when you talk about steam, I mean, you can do it on, you can trade things on steam, but all of a sudden it's, it's bad news if we do this in an NFT. And then also like, for, like, right. I'm, and I'm, they have, a, well, they have a closed system too. So their system yeah. is a closed loop system. And, and so right. like, you know, you can do some trading, things like that, like a, a lot, like similar to other things like CSGO, they, like they're more of a closed system. You know, what we have in Web3 is an open system, right? You can't mm -hmm. stop somebody, you know, from creating a marketplace around your items and then being able to sell them, right? Like we see with like an open C sells NFTs for games, but then like a blur comes along and, and then, hey, they're, they're selling NFTs for games. Well, you know, they, nobody could stop and say, no, I don't, you know. You know you can't do this. I don't. I don't want you. Like you know, you you can't have my NFTs. It's it's pretty open. I mean, there's ways to be able to like you know kind of block things, but in general, th that is kind of the idea and the difference of of having a closed system that nobody has uh, any kind of access to, and it's and you're not there's no value that you can bring out of it, right? Like yeah. you can't actually bring value out of the Steam system. Well, I mean, I, I got to tell you, if I was a game developer and I was making and I was I was throwing this up, if I made a billion dollars. The first five months I was out, why would I want anybody to use crypto and digital assets uh, for that aspect of NFTs? I just wouldn't want them to do that. That's just me as a business owner. But maybe I'm wrong. So we, okay, so we covered that part. Excellent response, Dash. Thank you. I appreciate it. The, but the other part is games. Because some of the games have been put out, let's just call a spade a spade, actually was awful. And it was just not a great experience for most people. Now we're seeing like games like this. This is from you. This is Shrapnel. I don't know how far away uh, this game is, uh, but it looks, I mean, just fantastic. I mean, gameplay and whatnot. And this, is probably, this is probably the, uh, the intro. But the, yeah, that's that. gameplay right there, though. That's gameplay, gameplay right there. Yeah. Looks pretty good. And then we've got this one, Alluvium. I think this mm -hmm. is one of your uh, ones you've talked about before. Yeah, yeah. And it looks, I mean, it looks Love fantastic. Alluvium. This is actual gameplay. And then, of course, congratulations. Yeah, you went up against Bryson on the <laughs> Alluvium and beat him. So That I did, yeah. That, yes. was, that was fun. <laughs> I just want to just want to mention that. Stack anytime anytime I can stick it to Bryson, man, I'll do it. He's he's the <laughs> homie, but you know, we love I love a good competition. So we're we're, we're always we're always kind of competing like that. So yeah, yeah, perfect. So I mean the, the the next the last one is just this. Is is it just the problem with the games? They've got to be better, triple A ranked games to get people to come in, the hardcore gamers. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that definitely better games. Or something that we we've needed but you know that's uh, we're already there there's tons of great games now i mean th that that was a question like two two years ago that was yeah. definitely a question like oh there's no good games now tons of them so many good games that i can't I, i'm actually having trouble like keeping up with all these games that are good and a, a lot of them are still in early stages of development like not everyone's like completely fully launched out there but a lot of them are in a really late, you know, in a, in a stage where it's like, man, this is very playable. It's fun. It, you know, when this launches, it's going to be fire, right? So I think that we're really close to having a, a ton of really good ones. But yeah, I mean, there, there are still some great games out there. Some great games. Yeah, I think we're on the cusp because those ones that I saw, it was always just some kind of video preview, but not an actual playable demo. So like when I, when I follow you and some other gamers, like I take a look and I'm like, wow, this is actually playable. How close are we? And it seems like we're right on the cusp. Maybe in the next bull run, like you talked about. We might be able to to see those. Yeah, I'm, well, I mean, I think a lot of them are like I said. I think the development cycles are kind of ending this year, so we're going to see a lot come out. Like uh, the one I'm playing on stream here uh, today, Last Expedition from Gala Games. It has been uh, in development. Gala. They've been moving over to UE5. That is going to be a huge hot title. Uh, some other really great ones like Superior from Gala Games is also really great. And their Walking Dead game is a fun one for kind of a mobile focus game. Um, there, like I said, but there are tons of really good games. Like no matter what you like playing. There is now something out there that is quality enough to be like, oh yeah, this is actually a lot of fun. Yeah, I can see that. I, I so I want to say this, and we'll wrap this up, is that a lot of the people who watch this show are not gamers. It is not. So yeah. I mean, maybe they should be. It might be a nice stress reliever. But for the non-gamer out there, what do you look at as far as like, and not investment advice, I'm not saying that, but what do you, what would you look at for like, like investing and taking a look at behind the scenes, what's what's being built on? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a good thing about this is that when it comes to crypto, you don't have to necessarily be a gamer to take advantage of knowing the fact that gaming tokens or gaming ecosystems, you know, are 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 something that are, are going to be very powerful here in the next bull run, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They could have some really great return. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, there when you look at like some of the stuff out there, right, you, you want to look at things that have kind of a unique angle or a good first mover advantage, I think is always something I look for. Uh, not that this game is not like a, a, a direct clone of something else. I try and stay away from like clones of things that are like really like, man, that's a, just a direct clone. Like you could say Alluvium is kind of like Pokemon, but they've done their own very different spin on how they do the game and things like that, you know, but uh, there are some like games out there like, man, that's just a straight Pokemon clone. I mean, it looks exactly like Pokemon, you know, it's got <laughs> similar name. It's, it's something else, Mon, you know, Crypto Mons. <laughs> right. You know, and, and when we see things like that and I'm like, those are the things you probably want to stay away from. But there's a lot of tried and true, you know, gaming tokens out there. They're kind of like what we call like the blue chip gaming tokens. Right. They're the, the Bitcoin, Ethereum's and and uh, and BNBs of, of the blue of, of the gaming world. And I mean, th th those are tokens like uh, like sand, you know, is one of those top tokens for the sandbox. Yeah. You know, they have massive partnerships, huge sprawling game, tons of developers. Tons of stuff coming out here for their season four and updates. So they, they really are pushing in, in the gaming world. And, and uh, you know, there's a couple other ones up, up there at the top that I think are, are, are doing some great stuff uh, that, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, some simple research is all you really need. You know, I, I don't focus a ton on the tokenomics or, or, or things like that on the channel or like price prediction stuff. You know, we focus on the games, but we do talk about a little bit about the tokens and things and how they work within the gaming ecosystem. So you understand, well, why is this necessary? How is it going to be used? And I think that that's also a pretty good thing to be researching as well. So as a non-gamer, you can look into those things and understand like, hey, I can see that this game is going to be hot based upon like, you know, how tons of people are talking about it on social and it's getting good social metrics. But then also the fact that like, you know, you can see that the, the token had strong performances and is sitting atop the chart of, you know, kind of the, the gaming tokens. And you can go to like a coin gecko and just go sort in categories, which is a great thing to do and just like go to the gaming category. Right. And it's all these tokens that are attached to games that kind of gives you a quick overview of, um, you know, of what's going on right now, uh, you know, in, in those ecosystems. So. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to take a look and go, well, which one of these actually gives me uh, the most fun? Because if I like it and I like to play it, then maybe it'll be pretty good in the future. And then also, like when I take a look at things, I just I think to myself, what is this built on? What is the underlying infrastructure of the blockchain? Like you talked about Sand. Sure. I take a look at Polygon and then a host of other ones that are out there. So for this one, totally makes sense. So Stash. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of that stuff is, is important to research. But, uh, you know, finding out those really important little details like that uh you know it, it, it's it's hard because there's so much data right that's what we try uh -huh. and do on, on my channel that kind of sift through those things and uh you know especially my discord and things like that talk to people about you know the gaming side of things here in crypto yeah makes a lot of sense yeah thank you so stash you said it all today again this could be another one of our 100k viewer videos who knows what it will be but i gotta tell you man it's always a pleasure to have you on because it's just hard to keep up in this space you know what i know it's what i do a pleasure as always rob i love it i appreciate being in your channel and all of the viewers and people out there watching thank you guys so much uh for for supporting rob because he's a quality guy here in the space man all right so everybody thanks sure. so much for stopping by we appreciate it if you like today's video thumbs up subscribe all that good stuff but uh that is it for me and stash go check him on his live stream gonna happen pretty soon that's it today thanks so much everybody see you on the next one